There he is, folks. <laughs> Roll me, baby. So uh, it's been an interesting, uh, we, well, we wanted to film some more, but we, we had some interesting circumstances happen. It <laughs> wouldn't allow us to be together. So here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Each in our own spot. And, and to tell you the truth, I'd, I'd actually rather be where you live because Robbie's in Hawaii. <laughs> you know what? And it's been beautiful here. Much as we love the tourists and need them. Yeah. The water's oh, that's clean. That's right. Right. It's like a ghost town. <laughs> yeah, well, kind of. And everyone loves it. You know? Yeah, no, I was just going to say, you get it all to yourself finally. <laughs> and that's so amazing. Yeah, but they closed the beaches down on us th oh. again. So it's like, um, okay. <laughs> So yeah, to, that's like to, uh, the Got Milk commercial. You got all the chocolate chip cookies, but no milk. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so the course, obviously, is... I, I think it's going to be tough, one, for people to believe that it's a possibility. Okay, and, and so what we're going to do now is we're going we're gonna to explain to them right off the bat how something, such a simple concept as one pentatonic shape really can get you through every mode, you're just gonna take that one shape and apply it in different spots on the neck in each particular mode to do that. Right. Now that sounds too good to be true, right? And, and, it, <laughs> and it sounds like, well, maybe, you know, I gotta know my, my shapes really well and yada, yada, yada. But no, it's really just one shape for a beginner, let's say, yeah. right? If, I mean, if you, got, if you got it down and you got all your shapes underneath your fingers, you are gonna be just ripping with this idea. Yeah. But as far as simplicity, one shape is really all you need. Can you, can you break it down how something so simple might be, you know, some advanced players might think, well, this isn't going to work for me, but it, but it actually does, right? <laughs> if, you, if you're not familiar, maybe, you know, because we both teach and tell me if this is not true for you, you see a lot of players with great technique, but that still doesn't know, mean that they necessarily know how to solo melodically. Right. They may be able to play a bunch of songs really well, and really convincingly, but when it comes time to improvise and really say something themselves, it's not the case. So the confidence isn't there. They may be able to fumble their way through it, but really not playing like you have a command of the instrument. And, and this concept, as we were playing with it together, <laughs> really is kind of that thing. And it's very simple because it takes the most common shapes we all know as players. So how, how does it work for all levels, number one? Okay, so what I'm going to do throughout this interview is show you how it works very simply, and it does, right. and how it can be more complicated if you're up to that level. So in other words, you can gradate to, through the course at whatever level you're at. But what I think people are going to appreciate, whether you're a pro or a beginner, is that you can apply what I'm saying by you know, just moving the shape and go, oh my God, I can get modality <laughs> by doing that. So let me, let it, me that's just- That's what I mean. It seems a little too good to be true, right? I, and this is it. And people go, well, that's, you said, I think once that's cheating. I said, no, it's using things intelligently. So, yeah, no, it, so what, it absolutely is. You know, it's, uh, it's staggering. And we'll, we'll, and we'll get into <laughs> some of the application aspects of it later, but can we take a, a simple mode or something like, you know, one of the common modes people will get into is like a Dorian mode, right? Yeah. It's not too exotic sounding. It's just a little bit off of a normal minor mode. Right. How would this apply over like a Dorian mode? Like what are okay. the three spots it would be in and why are they where they're at? And then okay. how can a beginner use that? And then how can it get into more an advanced? Okay. You know, play so mind. what I'm going to do is I'm going to be playing in the key of G, but resolving to the two chord, which is A7, right? A minor seven. Okay. So I've got a chord progression track that I'll play over. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the minor pentatonics from the minor chords of G major. So A minor pentatonic, B minor pentatonic, and E minor pentatonic. Now, if you add A and B together, you get all the notes of the G major scale anyway. Right? Mm -hmm. But what you don't get if you play A minor over this, which a lot of people would play A minor pentatonic over this, you won't get the flavor of the Dorian mode. Shift it up okay. a whole tone in the same pattern, so use yeah. the same pattern a whole step higher, you'll get the characteristic note. And then if you shift it into E, you get so many beautiful tones from the key center as well. Mm -hmm. And then you can mix those together either separately, which I'm gonna do yeah. for you now, 
and then I'm going to show you how I perform doing that. And you're actually going to really hear the modality as I do it, right? You'll hear, okay. oh, now I'm hearing a different flavor, right? Yeah. And then I'm going to show you how to do it all in position. If you're more adept and you know all your shapes and everything else, you can actually do all yeah. of this in position and get everything without learning a major scale pattern. Yeah. You just use them. Now, does this help people see, um, there's character, where do the characteristic notes come from, let's say, in, okay. in a Dorian mode? Like, what is it that, that you're, what is that sound and where does it come from? Okay, so the characteristic note of a Dorian is, is going to be the F sharp note, right, which is the major six. Okay. So if you think about your modes, Phrygian mode, the characteristic note is the flat second. Aeolian mm -hmm. mode, which is natural minor, it's a minor six. So this is the only mode that's a minor mode that has the major six. All right, and that's your characteristic okay. note. So from a beginner that might not understand even degrees of scales, which we do explain, but like just right off the bat, like how could you modify this first shape by using the two shapes together to get more, evoke that sound like you're saying? Okay, super easy. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play over the track. So here's what I'm gonna do, guys. I'm gonna do play A minor pentatonic, fifth position. That okay. same pattern one of the pentatonic, I'm then gonna shift two frets higher to B minor pentatonic. And, I'll, and you'll okay. hear that I hit the characteristic note of F sharp. So what Brett's saying is that the D7 chord has an F sharp in it. That's why you're mm -hmm. referencing that note and hearing Dory in that way. However, the yeah. chord progression might not have D in it. So that doesn't help right. you. So let me play. So what you're gonna okay. hear guys is I'm gonna play a couple of licks in A minor pentatonic, the same lick in B minor pentatonic, and then I'm going to do the same lick again in E minor pentatonic, just to prove to you that this works. And right. I want you to listen how that, to how that tonality sounds. Okay, so let me just jam over this track a little bit. And I'm going to start my phrases on the end of two, just for an extra bonus for you. Check you out. So patient. <laughs> You're right. Characteristic note. Right? And I haven't got it in A. Yeah, you know what what what's interesting about this is that um, when players are what what you're doing, you know, doing by going the overlap of those two scales creates some almost three note per string patterns. But if you don't play them as three note per string patterns, you get that like kind of a thing, and you're just hopping back between these two shapes, but it all of a sudden sounds way more modal, and it's like, you guys, I've just hit the B string, <laughs> licking one and licking the other, right. and it works, right? Well, the, the thing that I thought was so powerful about it is we've all worked hard for stock licks, right? I have them, yeah. you have them, everyone does. So instead sure. of like now figuring out a bunch of stock licks in new patterns and three notes per string, continue being a pentatonic player and just yeah. shift the shape two frets and you'll get yeah. all the modality you'll ever need. Because if you add A minor and B minor pentatonic together, you get the G major scale anyway. 
Anyways, right. right? <laughs> that blew my mind, right? Because, right. you know, when I, when I started looking at more chord shapes rather than scale shapes, I'm like, oh, these are just the chord. Like, if you look at the chords as they stack together up the neck, it's like, oh, that's your scale, right? But like, I, I think most people think of like, you're learning a scale and it's got to follow this pattern. And it's like, yeah, but you're losing perspective of, you know, how it all fits together, which is the chords or the chord progression and how those can fit together to make those shapes. But you're thinking about them from, uh, I would say a more correct standpoint, because you're putting like the notes of the chords first and you're seeing that first and the scale shape just happens to let you get around easier. Well, this you know? is where- Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And this is where guys get confused about the modes, right? So anyone watching this video right now, I want to dispel the, the myths of, you've got to learn seven scale patterns. You've got to do this and you've got to do that. And, <laughs> and none of it's understand. You don't have to do any of that. Yeah. What you have to understand, modality is based on the chord progression and where the chord progression resolves, right? So right. we're resolving our chord progression to the two chord. So I still use the G major scale, but I focus my attention on the A minor, not G. It's that simple. Yeah. If I'm playing B Phrygian, so a chord progression built from the key of G major, the chords, but it resolves mm -hmm. on the B minor, I still play G major scale and focus on the B minor chord. That's Phrygian. It's that simple. Right. So you're taking one specific major scale shape and you're just starting from a different degree yeah, of the uh, same scale shape. You don't, you don't even have to start there. Providing you resolve to chord tones of the tonal sure. center chord, you're golden. And what people need to realize too is every pentatonic <laughs> scale that you play right. is derived from the major scale. That's so crazy. All of them. See, that's, that, that makes it so much easier to understand, <laughs> though, because I think people, like you're yeah. saying, they assume they're going to have to learn, you know, however many modes there are, plus scale shapes for each of those modes. And it's like, no, it's one scale shape. It's just moved around to a different spot. Yeah. And in the course, you know? what we do, because in the course, I wanted this to work for all levels, right? So I've given you the ability yeah. to make this your course, how you want it to work for you, right? But what I do at the beginning of the course is I set you up and I go, guys, here's the seven chords of the major scale as triads and sevenths, right? Yeah. Then what I do is I put all of those chords in one major scale pattern and I then invert the scale to go to each of the chords. So I'll play G major seven and play the scale from G to G. Yeah. And you go, oh, I can hear that works. Then I yeah. play A minor seven and start the G major scale on the second degree, A, and play up to okay. A and you go, Oh my God, the notes are just following the chords. Well, of course. So that's, so the, so in G major, the second degree, when you're resolving to the second degree, that is Dorian, is that yeah. correct or no? Yeah, it's that simple. Yeah, which is crazy because it, you, <laughs> it doesn't ever seem like it's that simple. Like every time I've heard about the modes, it's like some drawn out, way <laughs> over drawn out example of confusion that sounds more like string theory and quantum physics than <laughs> something as simple as you're explaining it. And then to top it off that you can use a familiar, basically position one, what everybody knows is position one, you know, in minor pentatonic in three different spots and have it legitimately work as long as what you're saying, like that characteristic note is happening in there somewhere, you're gonna get that sound. Well, here's the thing, note choices are also something that we get to choose. I don't have to put the, characteristic note in there. It's still a Dorian yeah. progression. Yeah, well, what is, the, what is the chord progression that you're playing over? Okay, so basically, guys, I'm playing, and you get all the diagrams and everything for all of this stuff, so it's not, and I show you the chords in the course. Basically, it's an A minor with a ninth added to it, all right? So you've got the B in there and the E. Then I'm playing C5-2 and D5-2, but yeah. listen, you can hear it resolves there, right? So, that chord has the note in it, right? Well, it doesn't have the note in it. No, but, it doesn't. No. I can't but, see what you're doing. What, okay. What's the chord again? But, Show me the but, chord. But remember what I was saying, the, it doesn't have to be in there. The, yeah. the tonal center, the chord progression is what modality is about, right? I get right. to choose what I play over that, and if I choose not to put the major six in my lick, that's up to me. It's yeah. no less Dorian from the chord standpoint, only melodically, right? So, okay. so A minor nine, C five two, D five two, 
back to A minor 9. And that's a really yeah. nice resolution point, isn't it? It sounds great yeah. rested there. So when I play over that, I can play A minor pentatonic and not even think about hitting that characteristic note. It'll, yeah. It'll work. We proved it, right? Right. If, however, I really want to sound like I'm playing Dorian, I have to add the F sharp, right? Well, that's okay. found yeah, in my yeah. B minor pentatonic scale. And it adds all of the extensions as well, which gives you all the flavor tones over this chord progression. And you can then use E minor as well. So if you want to be very inside, you could mm -hmm. use either A or E minor. If you want okay. to evoke flavor, you go for the, for the B minor. So let me play a little bit more so you hear that. Yeah. So okay. I want you to really hear the flavor, right? So think this, sure. guys. You're only getting the flavor of the Dorian mode melodically if you play that B minor over okay. it, okay? So when you see me do that, you know that's what's happening, right? So here's A minor. Okay, so um, <laughs> conceptually, guys, you know that we're playing on, over that Dorian, A minor, B minor, and E minor pentatonic, right? So I'm going to stay with those three boxes, but show you a couple of moves that you can then move into each of the boxes. So what does that do? It gives you three times the lick, right? Right, just by simply saying, okay, here's an intervallic line, move it. You're getting different notes in a different intervallic line just by moving it. So I'm going to yeah. show you a couple of ways where you could maybe start doing that without it being okay. too much of a challenge, right? So let's. Um, so I'm going to start in the minor minor pen box of A pattern one, and I'm going to use E as a pedal tone kind of thing. something like this. simple ways of doing that stuff. Yeah, you know, that's really interesting. I mean, obviously your, your phrasing got more sophisticated as you moved on, but it's still a simple, you know, in the very beginning, you did an amazing job of showing like the same lick and how cool it sounded. I mean, it was the same pattern. <laughs> the notes were so different in the intervals, you know, and, and what part of the scales they were hitting. It just was like, wow. I mean, it sounds like you really thought hard about three different licks to play when it was just one lick moved to different spots. And this is, the, this is the power of the course, right? So you go, okay, I know a few licks. Oh, he's yeah. given me two places else to play that. And I sound different and I sound modal. Yeah. Holy moly, I don't have to do anything but shift. And Does it work bending? Uh, so well, are you gonna be able to bend, do your bending licks in each of these and have them work like that? Does that work? 
Well, here, okay, so on two of them, right? So for example, here's one of my stock ideas that you probably hear me play a lot, right? It's this kind of thing. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, you can't play it here because it's a semitone here instead of a whole tone. So you have to remember those kind of things, right? But that mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you're not getting cool things on the B as well. Because guess right. what? The B moves into other positions too, doesn't it? Yes. So when we're- So you would, you would just have to, you, you, and those two you could, but you would have to modify. You could start the same way, but modify one of those notes yeah. in the B position to have it essentially kind of work. Yeah, so I would kind of do this. I would be thinking, all right, so I know that doesn't work. I'm going to do this, right? So. Over my A and then maybe. Yeah. Right, and then on this one. Yeah. What I think you have to do is go, okay, I know three work. These mm -hmm. two are very safe. B minor is gonna give me flavor, right? So maybe what you do is you start in, add flavor, and then come back in and be extremely consonant. Not that this is not consonant, it is, right? It sounds yeah. great, but doesn't it add a lot more flavor than the other two? Yeah. And that's where I think judiciously what I've said to guys is, okay, I'm all about playing motifs. So if I create a line that I like, I repeat it. So that's why I did that's why I did this. Let me show you kind of what I mean in the context of a solo. So I've said this a lot in my other courses and when we've interviewed before, I've said three plus one are great ways to play solos. Three two bar phrases that are developed, your fourth phrase is a crescendo or a movement line, right? So it takes you out okay. of the motif. Let's see what happens, right? So you heard me play a similar line in the three places, mm -hmm. didn't you? And then I, took right. it, then I took it on a journey to end my solo. So what I'm saying to guys is you've got um, rhythmic motifs. So I played a similar rhythmic line, didn't I? But mm -hmm. because I shifted into another pattern, I got different notes. So I got a different melody and my rhythmic motif. So people are going, oh, that's nice. Oh, we did it again, yeah. but it sounded different. Oh, we did it again, yeah. sounded different again. And then take them on that journey. So I'm looking for tools that can make my playing sound um, more pro or more interesting by not doing too much. It's just right. using music, it's using scales and chords and music musically, not just like a guitar player that's blowing lines. I'm thinking, yeah. I'm thinking in a cerebral, intellectual way um, that doesn't always work, but I would guarantee probably 95% of the time that approach will work and pay off. Well, I mean, and you know, nothing's always gonna work, but this <laughs> no. particular deal, even in my own playing, you know, I've been playing a long time and can play relatively what I wanna be able to play, but something, Slowing down, A, is super important because then it really makes you focus on setting a specific thing that you're trying to accomplish and melodically doing it. So your brain starts to be able to hear the new intervals and then you, you got to slowly go and figure it out, you know, in and, and that characteristic note like you're talking about or whatever. But when you're playing through those, you know, um, in, in the one spots, like just playing. Mm -hmm. 
Like what you're saying starts to develop some sort of a thing, right? Things. Like make it count, you know? Because I think a lot of players, they, they get into modal stuff and they just try to burn through scales. And it's like the whole process is, and, and that's why I like this course specifically because even if you're an advanced player, it can show you how to think like a beginner again. And then your, you know, ability will start to geometrically, you'll start to hear things quickly if you're in the more advanced state and how you can put those shapes together in one spot and really get different sounds off of just playing out of the first pass. I'm going to just hammer that A minor one. Right? Or, or when the E minor one comes up, the... But like what you're saying, the, the motif, I guess you would explain it as, or, or playing the same rhythmic value and, and play around with the shape, it starts to really get, you know, that sound that you have. And it's, you know, it, you hear somebody like yourself and you're like, God, man, he must really, you know, obviously you have spent a long time doing it, but it's amazing how quickly you can get inside your mind and, and your phrasing abilities if you slow down and really work a spot. You know what I'm saying? And take each of those three uh, pentatonic shapes that you're talking about or, you know, however many there are in any given mode that we're doing and really play out of one shape and then play out of the other shape on the next pass and learn how to manipulate those really well. I mean, you can use the same lick in each shape and go up and that does sound great, but, you know, it also is really easy to start progressing quickly, even if you are a beginner, not speed wise, but phrasing ability and note choice, just playing out of those three different pentatonic shapes in one spot is just like, whoa, that's amazing, you know? Well, it really is, not but the other thing, and I advocate this wholeheartedly to anyone who's been playing a while, right? Because I get guys up say, well, I know my pentatonics. I go, okay, so do something for me. I want you to play a lick, land on the root. Then I want you to play a lick and land on the minor third. And then I want to play land on the fifth. Then I want you to land on the flat seven. Then I want you to take it back up to the octave in one shape. Right. And they, they can't. And they say yeah. they know it. Well, show me an example yeah. of that, because yeah. that sounds really cool. All right, so this is going to take you, this is another way of developing a solo. Start on, okay. resolve to the root, third, mm -hmm. fifth, seventh, done. That's an okay. eight bar solo, right? So let me... Um, do a super basic. Super basic. Yeah. There's the root, right? Here's the fifth. Here's the seventh. Here's the root. That's, that's so interesting because it does make a huge difference, you know? I, huge. You know, it's interesting how much it push and pulls emotionally depending on which degree of the chord you're <laughs> landing on, you know? It's almost like that third is like, we are here and it is emotional, whereas the root just sounds like, ah, relief. And that fifth is almost kind of like, whoa, we could go kind of either way here, <laughs> you know? And like, But it's like... The simplicity in that, yeah. just landing on a different part of the chord each time. But you know, so, so let's, you're right. And people just always want to land to the root and play it safe. But those other notes really have a huge impact in the feel and the and the sound. Well, when yeah, they do. And you know, when I say to guys about their playing, what did it make you feel? Most guys yeah. will go, "What do you mean? Felt fast, <laughs> or it felt you know? No, what did it make? I you know, sissy." <laughs> right. What are you what, talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what did it make you feel emotionally, right? And notes yeah. against chords have emotional value. And that's part yeah. of what the modality is about too, right? They're pulling out um, emotional content in music. So 
Let me do that again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the minor third, the fifth, our characteristic note. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to change it up a tiny bit so you go, oh, wow, what's that? Yeah. Right? Okay. So you can still use the same concept, but then you start adding in the complexities and the, and the emotional content of a approach, right? So right. Um, let's give this a go. Can, can you take that same thing, let's jump back to beginner level and just maybe take really like maybe three notes or four notes and really work a spot and show them how that would work too. Because I think as a, you know, again, this, this concept really does work at all levels, but that, that is a intermediate kind of a sound. What was like, I mean, if you were like basically like, You know, that, that simple, can you do that? Does that same thing kind of apply? Yeah, so I'm going to try and stay around the second and third strings in fifth position then. That, okay. Or that kind of thing, right? I mean, it's funny because when you shifted to super simple phrasing, you really feel the mood of yeah. what it is. I mean, it's almost like a picture comes into your <laughs> mind. Like <laughs> you can picture yourself like dancing on a, on a beach with a sunset. You know what I mean? Like it really starts to like feel like, not that, not that it doesn't when you speed it up, but like that is really powerful but simple phrasing, you know? And, and it doesn't sound like a blues lick. No. You know, it really sounds like it's evoking a flavor of a mode, but it's using simple blues licks to do it, you know? Well, I think the other thing is people forget that there are lots of options when it comes to playing phrases, right? So we have, yeah. we have double stops and we have legato and we have bends and we have all these tools at our disposal that sometimes I think we forget that by employing some of those, maybe we'll pull out some more emotions. So for example, with double stops, I'm getting two notes for the price of one, aren't I? So I'm getting the yeah. harmony on my melody, plus how yeah. does that then react with the chord progression? So, so then if you do something like this, There's my F sharp right there. And that's a little motif on its own. 